the most successful engine in automotive history. The Chevrolet 350 small block V8 didn't just power cars, it powered an entire culture, a movement, and four generations of enthusiasts who turned wrenches in garages across America. From 1967 to 2003, and continuing today as a crate engine, the 350 became more than just an engine. It became a religion. Introduced in the 1967 Camaro, the 350 cubic inch V8 quickly became Chevrolet's most versatile power plant. Installed in everything from Corvettes to station wagons, Camaros to pickup trucks, and even boats, industrial equipment, and highly modified aircraft. With its perfect balance of power, reliability, and modification potential, the 350 became the default choice for anyone who needed a V8 engine for any purpose. But the numbers tell only part of the story. Over its production run, millions of 350s were built, making it the most widely produced V8 engine in history. Yet what truly made the 350 legendary wasn't just how many were built. It was what happened after they left the factory. The 350 became the foundation of the hot rod industry, the backbone of engine swap culture, and the reason Chevy 350 became synonymous with American performance itself. This is the engine that made LS swap, a verb decades before LS engines existed. The 350 that powered a Wisconsin businessman's C1500 pickup to over 1 million miles. The engine that could be built to produce 145 horsepower for grandma's station wagon or 370 horsepower for a Corvette from the same basic architecture. This is the story of automotive immortality. Historical Context and Development The 350's story begins with Ed Cole's revolutionary 1955 small-block Chevy, the 265 cubic inch V8 that changed everything. Lightweight, compact, and powerful, Cole's design established the architectural template that would dominate American performance for five decades. By 1957, displacement grew to 283 cubic inches, and with mechanical fuel injection, it became one of the first production engines to achieve one horsepower per cubic inch. The 327 followed in 1962, pushing displacement further while refining the design. But Chevrolet needed something between the 327 and the big block 396, an engine that could deliver V8 torque and power in a package compatible with all their vehicle platforms. The answer came in 1967 when engineers created the 350 by combining proven components in a new configuration. The 350 used the 327's 4.00-inch bore but paired it with a new crankshaft featuring a 3.48-inch stroke. Longer than the 327's 3.25-inch throw, but shorter than big block dimensions. This oversquare design promoted good breathing and high RPM capability, while the longer stroke increased torque production. The result was nearly perfect. 350 cubic inches of displacement in the same compact package that had made the small block Chevy famous. The first 350, designated L48, produced 295 horsepower and 380 pound-feet of torque when it debuted in the 1967 Camaro. But Chevrolet immediately recognized they'd created something special. The 350's combination of adequate power, compact dimensions, and parts commonality with other small blocks made it perfect for widespread application. By 1968, it appeared in the Nova, and by 1969, it replaced the 327 as the base engine in the Corvette. The Golden Age. The 350's Golden Age came in two distinct waves. The first wave, from 1967 to 1971, represented the muscle car era's pinnacle. The legendary LT1 version, introduced in 1970, produced 370 horsepower in the Corvette and 360 in the Camaro Z-28 with 11-to-1 compression, solid lifters, big valve heads, 
and a 780 cubic feet per minute Holley carburetor. This was the 350 at its absolute performance peak, a small block that could run with big blocks and win. But the 350's real genius was its versatility. Chevrolet offered the same basic engine in configurations ranging from mild two-barrel versions for family cars to high-performance variants for sports cars. The L46 produced 350 horsepower, while more pedestrian versions made 250 to 295 horsepower. Every application used the same fundamental architecture, making parts interchangeable and keeping costs manageable. Then came the dark years. Emissions regulations, fuel crises, and the switch to net horsepower ratings devastated the 350's performance. By 1975, the L48 350 in Corvettes produced a pathetic 165 horsepower. The engine that had made 370 horsepower five years earlier was neutered by emissions equipment, lower compression ratios, and restrictive intake and exhaust systems. Critics wrote obituaries for performance engines, declaring the muscle car era dead, but the 350 refused to die. The second golden age came in the 1980s and 1990s as electronic fuel injection and computer controls unlocked new potential. The L98, with tuned port injection, produced 245 horsepower by 1991. The Generation 2 LT1 introduced in 1992 brought reverse flow cooling, aluminum heads, and 300 horsepower, proving the old architecture still had life. Technical Brilliance The Chevrolet 350's technical brilliance lay in its fundamental architecture rather than exotic features. The cast iron block with 4.40-inch bore spacing created a compact, rigid structure that could accommodate various bore and stroke combinations. The 90-degree V-angle balanced primary forces while keeping the engine narrow enough for tight engine bays. Five main bearings with 2.45-inch journals, after 1968, provided robust crankshaft support. The 350's oversquare design, 4.00-inch bore with 3.48-inch stroke, was nearly perfect for both performance and everyday use. The large bore allowed generous valve sizes and efficient combustion chamber design, while the moderate stroke kept piston speeds reasonable at high RPM. This geometry made the 350 equally capable as a 5,000 RPM street engine or a 7,000 RPM race motor with appropriate modifications. The engine's true genius was its modularity. Chevrolet designed the 350 to share components across the entire small block family, connecting rods, pistons, cylinder heads, intake manifolds, and accessory drives were largely interchangeable between different displacements. This part's commonality meant massive economies of scale in production and created an aftermarket ecosystem unlike anything in automotive history. Generation 2 improvements in 1992 brought reverse flow cooling that circulated coolant through cylinder heads first, allowing higher compression ratios without detonation. Computer-controlled fuel injection and ignition timing optimized performance across all operating conditions. Yet the basic architecture remained recognizable. Bore spacing, deck height, and bell housing patterns unchanged from Ed Cole's original 1955 design. The 350's adaptability extended beyond automotive applications. Marine versions powered countless boats, industrial variants ran generators and pumps, and modified examples even found their way into experimental aircraft, proving the design's fundamental soundness. Challenges rise. The 1970s nearly killed the Chevrolet 350 and every other American performance engine with it. The Clean Air Act, corporate average fuel economy standards, and insurance company surcharges on high-performance vehicles created a perfect storm that devastated the muscle car market. Compression ratios that had reached 11 to 1 plummeted to 8.0 to 1. Horsepower ratings collapsed. The LT1's 370 horsepower became a distant memory, 
as even Corvette 350s struggled to produce 200 horsepower. Emissions equipment strangled breathing and killed throttle response. Air pumps, catalytic converters, and exhaust gas recirculation systems added complexity while reducing power. The switch from gross to net horsepower ratings in 1972 made the decline appear even more dramatic, though net ratings were more honest about real-world performance. Fuel crises made gas-guzzling V8s politically incorrect and economically painful. Buyers fled to smaller engines and import cars that promised better fuel economy. General Motors responded by developing smaller displacement V8s like the 305, reducing the 350's role in passenger cars. By the early 1980s, the 350's future looked grim. Competition emerged from unlikely sources. Ford's 5.0 liter was gaining respectability, and import performance cars were stealing enthusiast attention. Within GM, the 350 faced challenges from new corporate engines and front-wheel drive platforms that couldn't accommodate traditional V8s. Most devastating was the perception that the 350's era had passed. Magazine articles proclaimed the death of performance, suggesting that computer-controlled four-cylinders represented the future. The 350 seemed destined to fade into history as a relic of a more permissive age, remembered fondly, but considered irrelevant to modern automotive needs. The Transition The 350's renaissance began in the mid-1980s as engineers learned to use electronics to unlock power while meeting emission standards. The L98 with tuned port fuel injection demonstrated that modern technology could revive classic architecture. By eliminating carburetors and optimizing fuel delivery with computers, Chevrolet extracted more power with better efficiency and cleaner emissions. The crate engine program proved brilliant marketing and engineering. GM Performance Parts began offering complete 350 engines, the Goodwrench 350, ZZ4, and high-performance variants that enthusiasts could bolt into any vehicle. This program kept the 350 alive in the enthusiast community, even as production vehicles transitioned to newer designs. Hot Rodders discovered they could buy a brand new 350 with modern internals, warranty included, making engine swaps accessible to anyone with a credit card. The Generation 2 LT1 in 1992 represented the 350's technological peak. Reverse flow cooling, distributorless ignition, and sophisticated engine management produced 300 horsepower from the Corvette version while maintaining drivability and efficiency. The LT1 proved the old architecture could compete with overhead cam competitors when combined with modern technology. But the end was approaching. The LS1 debuted in 1997, bringing aluminum blocks, improved breathing, and better packaging to the small block formula. Production 350s gradually disappeared from GM's lineup, with the last regular production engines built in 2003. The 350 had enjoyed a 36-year production run, extraordinary by any standard. Yet the 350 never truly died. GM continues manufacturing 350 crate engines decades after production vehicle use ended. The aftermarket supports 350 SS with parts rivaling new engines in sophistication, ensuring America's favorite V8 will continue powering enthusiast vehicles indefinitely. Legacy and Modern Impact The Chevrolet 350 achieved something no other engine has matched. True automotive immortality. Twenty years after leaving production vehicles, the 350 remains the most popular engine swap choice, the default answer when someone says, I need a V8. Its influence extends far beyond the millions of vehicles it originally powered. The 350 created the modern hot rod industry. Companies built entire businesses around aftermarket 350 parts. Cylinder heads, intake manifolds, camshafts, rotating assemblies, and complete engines. This ecosystem made building a 350 accessible to anyone, regardless of budget or skill level. You could buy a junkyard 350 for $200 
and build it into a reliable 400-horsepower street engine with readily available parts and knowledge. The engine's modification potential proved nearly limitless. Stock 350 blocks routinely handle 500 to 600 horsepower with proper preparation. Aftermarket blocks push well beyond 1,000 horsepower. The same basic architecture powers everything from mild street cruisers to pro-stock drag cars, demonstrating design flexibility that few engines achieve. More importantly, the 350 democratized performance. Unlike exotic engines requiring specialized knowledge and expensive parts, the 350 could be built by ordinary enthusiasts in home garages. This accessibility created generations of hot rodders who learned engine building on Chevy small blocks, passing knowledge and passion from father to son. The 350's legacy lives in every LS-swapped vehicle, every small block hot rod, and every backyard mechanic who learned that building power didn't require wealth or factory connections, just a Chevy 350 and the determination to make it sing. That's not just an engine's legacy. That's cultural impact that will outlive us all. The engine that powered four generations of dreams. The Chevy 350 didn't just move cars, it moved America. What's your 350 story? Share your builds, your memories, your horsepower below. Subscribe for more legends that refuse to die.